The anime begins by showing a boy named Bam, who lives in a tower base alone without his parent. Until one day, he met a girl named Rachel who became his best friend. The two of them have been friends for many years. But one day, Rachel had to leave Bam to take the tower exam. As a gift to the winners, they could ask for whatever they wanted. Bam, who didn't want to lose Rachel, ran after her. He asks Rachel to stay with him at the base of the tower. But she was determined to take the exam, so she ignored Bam's request. Rachel also revealed her purpose in participating in the competition, so that she could see the stars. Because above the tower, there is a sky with a very large collection of stars. After she left, Bam felt very sad. Suddenly, there was a man who said that all the answers were on the top of the tower, then Bam was unconscious. After waking up, he was already in a room that looked foreign to him. It turned out that at this time, he was already in the tower. Then, a man appears in the form of a demon named Hedon, who is in charge of guarding the tower. Suddenly, Bam felt confused about what was really going on. Hedon says the same thing again, whatever he wants is on top of the tower. Immediately Bam realized that he was currently taking the tower exam just like Rachel. In the first test, Bam is assigned to destroy a black ball which is in a monster cage. Bam rushed in, but suddenly, a woman named Ha Yuri Jihad stopped him. At that time, Yuri was accompanied by her male assistant named Evan Edrock. It is known that Yuri is the adopted daughter of a tower king named Jihad. She is one of the selected participants who can take the tower exam. Then Yuri lent her sword to Bam as his weapon to fight. After that, Bam rushed into the monster's cage again. Once inside, the hungry monster immediately attacked him and swallowed him. Seeing that, Yuri and Edrock were also very surprised. Suddenly, the monster was injured, it turned out that Bam had attacked from within. The monster took Bam out of his body, then Bam tried to destroy the black ball. But he had not succeeded because the black ball was so strong that his sword could not destroy it. Unexpectedly, the monster again attacked Bam from behind, and suddenly the sword let out a powerful explosion. Then came the true power of the sword, which took the form of a woman named Black March. The woman approached Bam and said that she would help him just this once. Seeing this, Yuri was surprised, because all this time the Black March had never wanted to help Yuri who was the original owner of the sword. Yuri also saw the presence of the Black March for the first time at that time. After the black ball was destroyed, Bam was transferred to the next stage of the test. When he opened his eyes, Bam was already on a stretch of yellowed grass. Then a cube appears that instructs about the second test. They are free to do anything to win the fight. In addition, they can also check the number of selected people and the remaining time through their pocket. When the number of selected people remains at 200 people, the exam will automatically be completed. After the instructions were completed, the participants rush to kill each other. On the other hand, Bam is surrounded by a man named Aguero Agnes Kun and a male crocodile named Rack Ray Thraser. But Kun didn't intend to attack Bam, he just happened to pass by and leave. Meanwhile, Rack is interested in having Bam's sword and attacks him. When Kun was away from him, he suddenly turned around and saw Bam's sword. Kun immediately came back to save Bam and asked where he got the sword. Bam explained that the sword was just alone, because his reason for taking the exam was just to meet his best friend. For a while, Bam and Kun hid behind a large rock from Rack's pursuit. Then from the opposite direction, Rack was seen looking for their whereabouts. Kun decides to shake hands with Bam as a sign of their friendship. Suddenly, Rack came to their hideout. Luckily at the same time, a notification appeared that there were currently 200 people left, so the fight was stopped. If there are participants who still continue the fight, they will be declared failed or disqualified. Next, the cube instructs that they must form a team, consisting of three people in five minutes. When the countdown ends, then the three people must touch each other. The rules made Bam, Kun, and Rack confused. However, the three of them decided to be a team because their positions were close to each other. Long story short, the participants who passed the exam were instructed to gather in a hall. Then a male ranker named Lero Ro appeared. Ranker is a term for someone who has climbed to the top of a tower and has been given a special ability called Shinsu that has no limits. After that, Lero made a barrier wall. For the team that made it through, then they were the ones who were given the blessing of luck because they were born with extraordinary intelligence or strength. In addition, the most needed by the participants to pass the exam is luck. When the test started, Bam was able to pass through the wall and was not blown away by the water at all, while the other participants who were beside him were pushed back by the current. Seeing this, Lero concludes that Bam has a hidden talent and says that a monster has appeared. While waiting for the other participants to come out, Lero invited him to talk. Flashback scene to Kun's past. At that time, he had a girlfriend named Kun Maria Jihad. However, Maria betrayed him, causing Kun to be exiled. Since that incident, Kun has become a person who has never put his trust in others. 
until the figure of his mother who had died appeared. She said that Kun had to close his ears, close his heart, and find the best way. After that, they waited for the start of the third test. Kun continued to watch the exam progress. According to him, the participants who had entered the exam room took a long time to finish their exam. He also wondered what they were doing in there. Then Kun and Bam who were sitting, were approached by a strange male participant named Mr. Niambag. He wants to tell Kun and Bam about the clues for the third exam because he once passed thanks to his extraordinary intelligence. So this time, the key is timing. But Kun who couldn't trust anyone, attacked him instead and thought the man just wanted to throw his team down. And at the same time, Kun's group was called to take the next exam. Once inside, they were greeted by a male ranker named Han Sung Yu. He explained that the requirement to pass this exam was to open the right door. There are 12 doors, and the time limit is 10 minutes. With improvised clues, Kun began to think about the clues' meaning. The rankers explained that they couldn't pass this exam using just their heads. According to Mr. Neon Bags, so far, the team that passed the test would not screen within 5 minutes. While he was thinking, Kun was undecided whether to believe Mr. Neon Bags' words or not, so he couldn't think straight. Before long, Rack kicked one of the doors. Luckily, he chose the right door within 3 minutes. It turns out that the exam this time is very easy, those who open any door in less than 5 minutes will be considered passed. Kun realized that Mr. Nyanbag's words were true. After the third exam ended, the participants were given time to rest. Then came a male participant named Shibisu, who approached Bam while taking a drink in the refrigerator. Shibisu also introduces his team, a man named Hats and a woman named Anak Jihad. Shibisu also became excited after seeing Bam, who looked weak but still wanted to try and make it this far. Not long after, Luro came to Bam's team and Shibis's team, who wanted to tell them about two things. First, they are free to choose whether they want to take the next exam or not, because they have been given the opportunity to take the bonus exam. Second, the team that chooses to take this exam and manages to win will be deemed to have passed all the exams. Hearing this, the other participants were excited to choose to take the exam. In this test called the crown game, the team that has the crown at the end of the game will be the winner of the game, with a time limit of 5 minutes. Then one member of the team that gets the crown must wear it and sit on the throne until the game time limit is over. The rest of the team members have to guard the crown against the opponent. If they are able to defend it until the end, then the other four teams will fail. Then four new teams will enter and the second round and so on will continue. Luro also said, if there are participants from other areas who want to take part in the game, then press the button in the waiting room. Kun and his team chose to observe and study it first, while Shibis's team immediately pressed the button to start playing. After Shibis's team faced off against their opponent, Anak confidently said that it was easy for her. She also advanced alone to fight the enemy team. It didn't take long for her to defeat her opponent easily, then she went to the throne to take the crown and sat on the throne. It turned out that Anak's estimation was wrong, the actual battle had not yet started because the other participants had just entered after a while. One of the male participants named Lor Fonsicle who is the wave controller, immediately attacked Anak who was already wearing the crown. She was able to dodge Lore's attack using her sword called Green April, which had the same extraordinary power as the Black March. Her sword tip can turn into many shapes and enlarge so that her opponent feels overwhelmed. On the other hand, the Black March sword that Bam used started to vibrate and react, so did Anak's sword. Not long after, she approached Bam in the waiting room. However, Luro disqualifies her and her team for having left the throne and violating the game's rules. After that, Bam's team started playing the crown game. They entered the game arena as well as the other teams, because no one else sat on the throne. Once inside, each team attacks the other team with various strengths and ways they can control. While they were fighting, could open his suitcase which gave off a blue light. He manages to snatch the crown using his suitcase to give it to Bam who will sit on the throne, while Kun and Rak protect him from the attacks of other participants. Soon a team appeared, who immediately slaughtered the other participants in the room. But it had been predicted by Kun because they were the relief team that Kun had prepared beforehand. It turned out that during the preliminaries, he began to gather people who could become cooperation partners. As a result, Bam's team could win easily without fighting. But during the last round, a number of strong teams began to emerge, and one of them was a team from another area whose strength Kun had not been able to predict at all. Even came a mysterious masked woman named Warian, who immediately attacked Rack. She also managed to get past Rack and jumped at Bam. Suddenly, a woman named Indorsi Jihad appears. Indorsi and her team are participants from other arenas who decide to help Bam. Meanwhile, Kun and Rak have to fight two men who are Warian's team. On the other hand, Bam was instead focused on a woman in a rogue, who he thought was Rachel. Unexpectedly, Indorsi lost her balance so she fell. So Warian immediately attacks Bam, 
but is blocked by a woman in a robe that looks like Rachel. When the woman's robe was opened by Warian's attack, Bam was very sure that the woman was indeed Rachel. Seeing this, he immediately tried to help her and left his throne. Not long after, Bam's body gave off a powerful force that the other participants thought was Shinsu. The power managed to destroy Warian's mask, and she was seriously injured. When Bam was about to kill the woman, suddenly, the figure of Black March came out of his sword and kissed him until he was unconscious. After that incident, Bam was treated, while the other participants continued the fourth exam. The exam will be carried out after the participants choose a position based on the roles they take during the fight. There are five positions they can take. First, Fisherman, who is a melee fighter during the fight. Second, the Spear Bearer, is in charge of facing the opponent from afar. Third, the Light Bearer, is in charge of lighting up the Dark Tower with their lighthouse. Fourth, the Scout, who is in charge of studying the movements of opponents on the front lines to help Fisherman. And fifth, the Wave Controller, is in charge of controlling Shinsu and providing assistance during the fight. Their training will start in two days. Long story short, Bam woke up. Kun told him that the woman he thought was Rachel was someone else, and she didn't know Bam. But actually, Kun lied, because Rachel had met Kun and asked him to hide it from Bam so that they could both become strong. Then Kun gave Bam new clothes because his old clothes were full of blood. On the other hand, Rachel actually feels jealous of Bam because now he has many friends. After fully recovering, Bam also joins the wave controller class with a male teacher named Renlo Pabia. There were several other participants in the class, including Warian. Ben then approached Warian to apologize for hurting her right eye. In the first exercise, they are taught to make an agreement with the administrator in order to issue Shinsu. In the subconscious, Bam meets a giant creature who feels attracted to him and makes a pact with him. In that class, Bam gets a friend named Ho who is jealous of him because he has many friends. But when in front of Bam, Ho is always kind and friendly. While practicing together, Ho became increasingly jealous of him because Bam is always lucky every practice, even his friends always increase. When Ho was in the room, suddenly he received a letter that he did not know who the sender was and what it contained. The next day, Luro explained the rules of the fourth exam. The participants were asked to see the dome building outside, and they would play chase there. There are two guards in this game, and one will be chosen by a male ranker named Quant Blitz. Teams that qualify will be awarded 200,000 points, and if they manage to win the Quant badge, they will get another 200,000 points. The game started. They are divided into two teams, namely Team A and Team B. Team A is chaired by Kun, who is working on a plan. He appointed Shibisu to lure Quant. But even though he had carried out the task according to plan, Quant still couldn't be defeated, which made him even more annoyed. However, due to his responsibility as a supervisor, Quant tried to contain his emotions and was kind enough to give him 111 seconds to leave. Kun immediately took advantage of the opportunity to tell the others to carry out their second plan, which made Anak as a badge bearer while the others would be tasked with holding Quant in their respective positions. But their plan failed again, because Quant could move so fast that not a single attack could hit him. On the other hand, Quant managed to beat Tima very easily. As a result, Quant managed to arrive at the exit of the bridge, which turned out Kun was already there. Kun tried to convince Quant that Anak had already jumped down to go the other way. Actually, Anak is under the bridge, but she stands on a cube that has been duplicated. Turns out Quant already knew that Kun duplicated his lighthouse and that someone was standing above it. Then Quant took Kun to jump off the bridge. Anak took advantage of that opportunity to pull herself back onto the bridge, while Kun helped Quant to climb back onto the bridge. Unbeknownst to the others, Kun and Lore had apparently been secretly working together to help Quant, causing Team A to lose. Luro who witnessed the test, was confused about the benefits Kun got from this action. Because Kun helps Quant just before his team wins. Han Sun Yu also explained that Kun's real goal was to use Team A as information gatherers, so that Bam on Team B could win. Because Kun actually already considers Bam as his best friend or someone he can trust. On the other hand, Team B had just entered the test arena. They even argued for the position of leader. The debate stopped after Endorsi volunteered because she was one of Jihad's daughters. It is known that although they are considered children of Jihad, but they are all adopted children who were chosen based on their abilities. They can have a romantic relationship and can't give birth to children. Then, there are the women who were blessed by Jihad and chosen as the daughters of Jihad. If they violate, they will be killed, as experienced by the biological mother of the children. In contrast to the compact game of Team A, Team B actually betrayed each other. Starting from Endorsi, who tried to kill one of the other members to reduce her rival in the next test. The second was experienced by Hats, where the three of them were assigned to restrain the movement of Quants, but the two of his team just left him. Hats also had to face Quants alone and was beaten badly. 
The third betrayal was committed by Ho who attacked Rachel. It turns out that the contents of Ho's letter were that if Rachel disappears, then Bam will disappear too. Soon Quance appeared from behind Ho and Rachel, followed by Bam. This throws Ho's plans into chaos. As a result, Ho also shows his true nature that threatens Bam to kill Quant, while he takes Rachel hostage. When Rachel tries to get away from Ho, she is accidentally stabbed by Ho's knife. Suddenly, Bam who saw this, unknowingly managed to use a powerful stance. Even Quant judged that his strength resembled a rancor. On the other hand, Ho who felt desperate, decided to end his life. At the same time, came in Dorsey who tried to fight Quant. Even though her strength was above the other participants, it was not enough to defeat a rancor. Then she used a cunning trick and managed to win by snatching Quant's two badges. After the final exam was over, they paid their last respects to Ho. And as a result of the attack at that time, Rachel was diagnosed with paralysis which forced her to use a wheelchair, so she was disqualified from the tower exam. But Bam is determined to be her feet and take her to the top of the tower. After that, Bam trained with Ren to control Shinsu. Ren is known as a member of the Royal Law Enforcement Division No. 67. At night, Rin was seen making a phone call with someone in the cave. But you caught him, and it turned out that he was a spy assigned to steal the Green April Sword, the Black March, and kill Anak. As a result, there was a brief fight between the two of them. Even though Yu's strength was superior, he preferred to close his eyes and ignore what he had just learned. The next day, the announcement of the exam results began, wherein Dorsey, Anak, Didi Kancho, and Blarous were chosen to be fishermen. Then Rak, Akryon, Paracule, and Alexi were chosen as spear bearers. Then Shibasu, Hats, and Nair were chosen to be scouts, while Bam and Lore as the wave controller. And the last one is Kun and Rachel as light bearer. However, due to the injury, Rachel was considered a failure. Not accepting the decision, Kun then asked the supervisor to pass Rachel through the administrator exam. The administrator's exam is a tough test that is tested by the direct administrator, where King Jihad used to also take the exam. However, the requirement to take the exam must be an irregular. Broadly speaking, the participants who took the exam were Heden's chosen people. But due to mistakes, sometimes weak people like Bam can follow suit. As a result, Bam was allowed to meet directly with the administrator. Unexpectedly, the administrator's form turned out to be a giant figure who once had a contract with Bam. It is not explained what happened, but Bam finally got permission for Rachel to take the exam. Long story short, the next test begins. In this test, Bam and Rachel will be put into Setsu's bubble to be used as bait, then caught by the trawling dolphins to be eaten by the queen. And if they manage to get out safely, then they would be declared past, while the task of other friends is to overcome the problem. First, they will face the goblin barnacle who uses a giant worm to suck up fish. Second, striped pigs that make dolphins run away. And finally, stingrays that eat anything that moves. In order to overcome the problem, this time, the team is led by Kun who is a strategist. Various plans were carried out by Kun, such as sending Shibasu to watch over the dolphins, Hats monitoring the movements of the goblins and giant worms, and the last one was watching the escarpment. At first, nothing strange happened, but suddenly, two fishermen died, which turned out to be preyed on by the stingray. Luckily, Anak and Endorsi arrived, which made the stingray not move and intended to run away until Anak was chased by it. It turns out that the stingray is a monster controlled by the killer of Anak's mother who deliberately came to separate Anak and Endorsi because that person's main goal is to seize Green April and kill Anak. After that, came the Stingray carrying the helpless Endorsi. On the other hand, the group on standby was accidentally caught by the goblins. Rak who was originally about to run away from the goblins, immediately turned around and then wanted to face the goblins. But he has been surrounded from all directions so that he does not move. Luckily, Lore came to save him with a group of striped pigs until there was an attack between the goblin army and the striped pig group. Back to Anak who was dealing with her mother's killer, Ren, he even offered Endorsi to kill Anak, as well as clear Endorsi's name afterwards, but Endorsi was more in favor of Anak. So instead, they tried to defeat Ren, but on the contrary, the two of them were beaten badly. But when the children started to get cornered, Yuri suddenly came, accompanied by Shibisu and immediately shocked everyone there. With just a snap of a finger, Yuri could corner Ren. In addition, Yuri was also able to fend off Ren's attacks easily, and it didn't take long for her to defeat him. On the other hand, it seems that Bam and Rachel are getting closer to their goal which is the top of the tower. But Rachel's nature began to change from being cheerful at first to being very gloomy and quiet. Suddenly, a stingray appears that attacks their bubble, thus putting them in danger. Because Setsu's bubbles are only able to prevent them from sinking, not resist attacks from outside. Bam immediately attacked the stingray, but his attack failed to hit the target. The longer he was in the middle of the ocean, he felt it would be very dangerous. 
so he chose to be swallowed by the stingray, then he attacked it from within. Luckily, his attack was able to kill the stingray, so he could get out of the stingray's body safely. However, Rachel's attitude became even more strange. Suddenly, she was able to stand up, and she deliberately pushed Bam out of the bubble. Bam then fell to the bottom of the very dark ocean. The scene changed to a flashback when Rachel was about to take the tower exam for the first time, which turned out to be a mistake, because the one who should have been chosen was Bam, not Rachel. But because Rachel doesn't want to go back into the dark, she pleads with Hedon to be allowed to take the tower exam. Therefore, Hedon also gave her a first test to destroy the black ball in the monster cage. But she refuses because she thinks the exam is too difficult, so Hedon uses Setsu to hide Rachel's whereabouts. And it turns out that all this time, she has seen what Bam has done since the beginning of the exam. From that moment, her jealousy began to appear. Then Hedon makes an offer, if Rachel can kill Bam, then she will be allowed to climb the tower. As a result, Rachel also accepts Hedon's offer to fulfill her ambition so far. Since then, she has always waited for the right moment to kill Bam. And now, is the perfect time to kill him since they were alone in the bubble. After that incident, Bam's friends did not suspect Rachel. They speculate that Bam has been eaten by fish. Luro who was present there also said that the rankers would contact them about what they should do in the future. In honor of Bam who had died, they agreed to help Rachel climb up to the tower. With his departure, all of Bam's friends noticed Rachel, so her jealousy disappeared. On the other hand, it turns out that Bam is still alive. He is now aware of Rachel's evil nature. The anime ends. The moral that can be learned is that the person we consider a friend can be crueler than an enemy.